The first thing I did was use microcrystalline wax and created a sculpture of the model Joy. It's three quarter life size and stands about 43 inches or 110 centimeters high. When producing a sculpture, you always have to know where to make the mold and what it's going to be cast in. In this sculpture, I decided it's easier to make the arms removable to help make the mold and make the casting. This was designed in the armature before I started the sculpture. The first step was to cover the sculpture. The next step was to design where I wanted to separate the molds. Then I put clay on and designed the rubber for the mold. Some artists and mold makers brush on the rubber. Usually, especially for a mold this size, you need two people. Because I'd made this all myself, it was easier for me to pour the rubber. If you want to know more about this, I have made a YouTube and a Rumble video about rubber mold making. I brought the molds to a foundry where they made the wax casts for the lost wax process of casting bronze. Ah, there it is. There she is. Mike did a beautiful job. He really did. Hit it. Yeah. There's Mike walking away. Right now, a little spot didn't cast, so we're fixing it. Okay. It's an oh, 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 one, uh, zero. Fluxing the rod with borax. Borax? Here's the leg mold. That's where the cup is, and it gets poured. And that's the mold. That's a grinder. This is the DeWalt. Turn it on, you press this down, turn it on. And uh, they have different blades. These are for cutting, some are for stone. Okay, I'm using this to cut off the bronze. This here is an air tool. Works on air. Okay. Pretty big bit. And that works on air. So now I'm taking off these. These are called flash marks. I showed you in the last video, but these are these are flash marks. So I'm grinding those off. That's where the hot molten uh, bronze comes in, and it'll it'll just like quickly like spread apart from the heat. Okay, so that's where those things. So I'm just grinding those down. But let me just show you what I'm using now. I'm using these things. Now I got these from Harbor and Freight. They're really good. These are air tools. Okay, these are air tools. I did this, and I'm using this kind of bit. I think it's called a double, double cut, double cut. It's kind of nice. Okay, 
So I'm using this one. You get the size, that's a quarter inch bit. And then I'm also using this one. I got this one, which is a nice, it's really a long one. You can get, this one's kind of stubby, but this one can get a little better angles. And uh, there's another one on the Harbor Freight. I did take off, there's a, there's a control switch here, but I took that off so you can just go up and down. You don't have to hold the switch. Of course, you got to be careful. And then I'm using this bit, again, another, another double end, but you can see the difference in the bits. Uh, the double cut works kind of nice. Uh, anyway, you got to be careful with the splinters. They are metal splinters. It's, it's unbelievable. I don't know if you can see them on the thing, but these are little tiny little metal splinters. You really got to be careful with those things. And what I did was I bought these gloves. These are actually from Harbor Freight again, uh, but they have this long cuff which works nice keeping those uh, things away from you also here on the <clears throat> the grinder it's kind of a crazy setup here but it was very inexpensive so I have my compressor here got the compressor here and then the compressor goes into this which gives me about 90 psi right then I, I split it because one of these my old one, my old line here. This old line comes down into here where I drop it to maybe, I uh, can't see what that is. Okay, I drop it to me here. And this one is where I use it, this thing to blow off all those splints, those little splinters when I'm, uh, little metal shards, I don't know what you call them, when I, when I use the, uh, to blow it off when I'm finished working, to blow, blow it off me. Is the big grinder here for something like this and taking off the big grinds here's another big grind okay I got an old Fordham here which still works good and I'm using this bit here's this the old Fordham okay this works nice and again I got a double cup but it's a lot smaller that's an eighth inch bit so you can picture how small it's maybe a quarter inch maybe a quarter inch and that works that works really nice for again coming down here and taking these this flashing out so here's Glenn Glenn's helping me put on the arm today professional welding teaching me what to do he doesn't talk As they much. say in Long Island you do metal work? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a welder! <laughs> now that the arm is on, I'll go back to chasing again. Here, chasing means making the metal look like there's no welds. I don't show it here, but I do have a YouTube and Rumble video about chasing and working with bronze. To make the sculpture stand, I welded on the bottom of the feet to rock. Put these things on, because this is too small. Get you a little more leverage. And turn a little bit in, turn back a little bit to break the nubs. Because the sculpture is heavy, I have to use a hydraulic table lift. I also made a turntable that I C clamped to the hydraulic lift so I could turn it around. Here I'm using a hoist because it's a little too heavy to lift and hold.
this is my studio setup. Obviously, here is my uh, uh, Joy the Bronze. That's how I'm working on the midsection, chasing that. Uh, actually, it's nice because I have the model right next to me. Well, the uh, sculpture right next to me in wax. So I have that. Over here, when I was working on the body, this is the box I was holding the chest in. I still got to fix the arm over here. I got to put the arm on. Uh, here's my gloves, masks. Here's some chasing tools. Some chasing tools. Uh, air blower. Uh, actually, here's uh, my chasing tools. I made this one. This one does the ridges. That's one of them I made. The chasing tool. Okay. And then over here, I got uh, two Dremel tools. That's to the, this base with some uh, other chasing tools. So air. This is my. Uh, I forgot what they called now. Anyway, there's the compressor. And over here, if I come around here, alpha tig. I've been tigging away. And uh, that's what I was working on right here. Now I welded it. Now I'm just chasing it. Okay. So it all looks like one, and the last thing I have to do is put on the arm. Here the bronze is all finished and ready for the patina or color. For this sculpture I wanted a look of terracotta. So I heated this sculpture and I patinaed it with red iron oxide. 